In this video, we'll use Unity and Bolt Visual Scripting to add items to our inventory by first looking for the first available slot. Let's begin. Shall we play a game? Welcome to part three of my complete inventory series. Because of the complexity of this build, I would strongly recommend taking each of these videos in order, so if this is the first video you're seeing in this series, be sure to click the card in the top right to return to the start. If you're the type of person who prefers a written tutorial to a video format, I've posted a link on my Patreon page that will give you a step-by-step -step guide on how to complete each of these steps, which is free for everyone to use. If you enjoy these tutorials and would like to help support my channel, be sure to choose your level of support on my Patreon page while you're there. As I stated in the showcase video, if you want the system but don't really care about building it, as my way of saying thank you to my top supporters, I've made the project files downloadable, not only is my complete inventory system included to these supporters, but my complete 2D player controller as well, which by the way, includes a simple enemy AI. With that out of the way, let's get started with this build. In this video, we're going to begin building macros so that our items do exactly what we want them to when we pick them up. And because this system gets pretty complex very quickly, it's a good idea to take the necessary precautions so that we can keep things neat and organized. And in order to do this, going into your macros folder, I would highly recommend that you set up five new folders. Now you'll notice that I not only have these named, but I also have numbers in front of them. The reason I'm doing that is because I don't want them to sort in alphabetical order, but numerically so that I can easily keep track of what goes where. If you remember from last tutorial, I had you set up an AOT dictionary, uh, ahead of time dictionary on a game object called Master Inventory List, where you have all of your game objects sitting underneath. Um, and I told you that the string on that master inventory list needs to match the item ID for each object. So I had you set up an item ID and call it Barry. So as you can see there, it is exactly the same. It is case sensitive as well as the Barry uh, game object string in that AOT list. And the reason I'm telling you this is because under our macros other folder, um, I'm going to have you set up a new flow macro. It's called the get object key flow macro super unit and um, what this is going to be doing is it's going to be checking uh, the item ID for that game object and it's going to be pulling the very same string from the master inventory list and it's going to be sending it into our system this is where we're actually going to be making use of that super unit um, I had you set up an item macro last time and I just placed that inside my world item macro um, and these are all the same, so if you'll notice here, the berry is the exact same uh, flow macro, even though it says berry here, it's actually this item. If you scroll down, you look, it's that item flow macro. And we're actually going to drop that get key, uh, get object key super unit right here, and we're going to run it into this custom event. Let me explain what this little pickup unit is doing. Um, for, the, for the intents of this um, tutorial, I'm just clicking on my object here to add it to the inventory, but I know most games don't work that way. So the way that you would uh, actually add an item to your system is you would go through all the previous process of creating an item dictionary and all that other stuff. Um, but let's say, for example, if you're running a 2D game where you run over the object, you know that you have to have a box collider on it, and you would just set this to trigger. So, for example, if this uh, interacts with our player game object, then you would use um, a different unit here instead of this little pickup um, that I have right here. You would use this on trigger enter and exit super unit, and you would just set the tag to player or whatever you want it to interact with. Now, if you've never seen this, I've used this multiple times, and I don't really remember where I got this thing from. I have used this 30 different times. I think I got it from One Wheel Studio, but again, I cannot be sure. I don't remember where I got it, but I've used it a lot. So basically what this is doing is it's checking what it's colliding with, and it's on a 2D game, so obviously this wouldn't work for your 3D game. You just use the on-trigger enter instead of the on-trigger enter 2D. And so what it's doing here is it is saying, hey, I'm interacting with the player, and when it enters the trigger with the player, then you would just run that right into there, and you wouldn't need this little pickup unit. So that's how you would run over a game object to add it to your inventory instead of picking the object up by clicking on it, which is what I'm going to be doing here. So when I have a mouse down event, when I click on that game object, it's going to check. You might have never seen this object before. It's an event system. Anytime you add a flow macro or a flow machine to your scene, you'll also notice that you get this little event system. That is what this, uh, this little game object right here is referencing. Um, and what it's doing is it's checking to see if our mouse pointer is over 
the game object. What game object is it referencing? The UI inventory. So in other words, the reason why I have this in here is because I don't want to be able to click these items through the inventory panel. If it's over the inventory panel, I don't want anything else to happen. I just want, you know, I want to click on these things instead of adding new items that might be behind my inventory. But again, you wouldn't need this if you ran the items over, like in Minecraft, for example. Um, so what I'm doing here is I'm saying, hey, is the pointer over the uh, UI system? Then if it's not, which it isn't, then it's going to add that game object. What game object? It's getting the item ID of itself, and it's checking that with the master inventory list, which we had um, our item dictionary on. I told you last time that you need to make sure that your um, that your key that you're re re referencing in the AOT dictionary is the very same. So for example, I have the berry here. That string is what it's gonna be calling. It needs to match the item ID, exactly, uh, case sensitive. So that's what you're seeing there and it's getting that application variable. If you remember last time, I had just set up an inventory game object uh, app variable and I told you you can use whatever prefab you want there because whenever you click on the inventory you'll notice that the singleton principle here it is setting that inventory uh, game object that self um, inventory game object as that app variable and that is where we are actually referencing it on that uh, on that item itself after we add it to the system calling a custom event which I'll show you exactly where that's going in just a few minutes um, we are actually going to destroy that game object so in other words when I click on this add it to the inventory and destroy yourself which is why we use the item dictionary and not that game object itself okay what I'm actually gonna do for this next part is I'm actually gonna start at the end of the train on each one of these game objects and then I'm gonna go up to the parent item so that you can see exactly how the flow is working so we have our game object and it's going into the inventory system we're gonna start at the end of the line now, um, for this uh, item amount game object, so this amount object is sitting underneath your item uh, game object, so it's childed under that. The good news is, is you're done with that. You're never going to have to mess with this again. This is absolutely done. But we are going to be referencing this in our item. And for our item, what you're going to need is you're going to need to set up in your inventory item uh, folder, under your macros folder, you're going to have to set up a new flow macro called add items just right click create a new bolt flow macro and name it add items and this is the game object that you're or this is the flow machine flow macro that you're going to need to make let me briefly explain what this is doing on your input uh, special note on this is that your items to add is an object if you're having trouble finding that just click object or type an object there and click it and it should uh, come up so we're adding our uh, object that we click in our world to this item uh, game object and it's going to be adding it to the list of the slot list this is an object variable I had you set up uh, I believe two tutorials ago as we were establishing our foundation what it's going to then do is going to count the items in that list and if the amount of items in that list is greater than one then we're going to have to turn that number on if it's not then we need to turn the number off you don't need to see a number for one item you only need to see the number for stacking uh, which we'll get into in the next tutorial. I'm going to have you go ahead and set this up now because um, you are adding items to the list and when we start turning things on, we want to make sure that the number stays off if there's not more than one game object in that, uh, in, in that location. So if the number is greater than one, it's going to get the child object, which is the amount, um, and it's going to set that object, which is zero, it's number one in the list, um, it's going to set the text mesh pro UGUI to enabled and this is not a text mesh pro it's a text mesh pro UGUI which is a um, UI element now if you're having trouble finding this go to tools go to bolt go to unit options wizard scroll down to the bottom go to next go to types at the very bottom just hit add and then you would just add text mesh and then hit generate so you'll generate a new list of objects that you can call in your graph and you should have no problem at all finding the text mesh pro ug ui game element so what it's doing if it's more than one it's setting that to true it's then counting the objects in that slot list which is the same list here uh, it's counting it again and it's giving it's going to set the number 
the, the text amount number on that uh, childed game object of amount to whatever the number of the items in the list is with an integer to string. It's an integer, not a float, because it is a whole number. It will never be a decimal. It's a whole number. We're counting that. If it's not greater than one, then it's just going to turn it off. Um, so under our item game object here, we're going to set a custom event of item amount, and then we're going to run that into, it's going to have one argument here, we're going to set that argument into the object to add node that we put in the input there. Where is this game object actually coming from? Where is this being triggered from? Well, it's being triggered on its parent item, which is the item slot. For the item slot, you're going to need to make a new folder, oh, I'm sorry, under the folder item slot, you're going to need to make a new super unit, flow macro, um, and it's going to call it be called object, uh, object from ground. And this is what this is going to look like. The first thing that we need to do when an object comes into the slot before it goes into the item itself is it needs to set the isFull variable to true. And that is basically the way that I'm checking uh, to see if that slot is occupied. It's not full. If it was full, it would be capped. And I know that can be a little confusing here, but I'm just checking to make sure that that is occupied. And I'm setting that saying, hey, yes, this slot is occupied move on to the next one in the check we're about to do in just a second so it's going to get the child game object of itself which is this item and it's going to turn the image on and then it's going to get the image of the sprite renderer of this like say for this example this berry and it's going to copy that and set it to true so um if you actually look at this game object I actually have this turned off i believe and there's a difference between an image and a sprite renderer. The image is the UI element. The sprite renderer is the game object in the world. So it's copying the game object sprite in the world, and it's setting it to the UI element by copying it here. And then it's going to run into the item amount, which, as you remember, is the custom event that we're triggering on the item, which is the childed object of the item slot. But if you notice here, whenever we go back to our item slot, we have another custom event called item add. And it has one argument. It's running into that game object. Where is this coming from? Well, you guessed it. This is coming from the inventory of the parent. Under the uh, macros folder inventory, you're going to need to add a new super unit called uh, add to inventory. And this is what this looks like. Again, this is very simple for now, but this is going to get much, much, much more complicated later on so what we're going to do is we're going to run an input we're clicking on that game object and it's coming into this one first so this is the engine uh the item is your caboose so the engine is going to say okay we're going to do a for loop now i know you might not have ever seen this before let me just very quickly explain the difference between the for loop and the for each loop now they look very very similar but they're not identical um, so the for each loop is going to grab, let's say, a list. If you notice, that's a little list icon there. Uh, it's a collection of items. Um, and it's going to grab every single one of those items, and then it's going to do something through the body. You control which items do what through the index, and the item itself is what you're grabbing out of that list individually. When it's done doing that for each object, it's going to go to the exit. So these two are very similar. The difference is, is that this requires a list to do objects with, and we are going to be making use of this later on. The for loop gives you control over where you want to start and where you want to end. The way we're doing this is we're going to say get the child count for the items in your list. So for example, here I believe I have 54 different children to the inventory so it's 53 but if you notice this one doesn't have a number on it so 54 it's going to start with the first object in that list i think i'm in the wrong one here i am it's going to start with the first object in that list and it's going to keep going until i break the loop so the if you didn't have this little break loop over here this would be a for each unit but we have control over that 
what we're going to do is we're going to get the child of the index we're controlling which one we're selecting and we're going to do this one at a time starting with the first one we're going to step down by one and then we're going to continue until we get to the last or until we break the unit when it's broken it will come out of the exit which we will utilize later on what we're doing is we're checking to see if the child objects object variable is full in other words is that slot occupied the item slot is occupied if it's not it will put the item in there by going to this item add and we will run that game object that we click on our berry and it's sending it into the unit um, it, we're gonna add that to the item add it's gonna go to the slot it's gonna go to the item and stop there if it is not full um, it, I'm sorry, if it is full, it's just going to go to the next one and go to the next one and go to the next one until it finds an empty slot. If it's not full, it's going to add that item and it's going to break the loop and then we are done. We are not doing anything else with that unit. Okay, you should now be able to test out your system by just grabbing game objects from your prefabs folder and just dropping them into your scene. And when you hit play, you should notice that when you click on these game objects individually, it will look for the first available slot and add those items to that slot. If it's not available, it'll add it to the next one. Now, what if we have uh, the same game object and we want those items to stack instead of filling the next slot? Well, that's what we're actually going to cover in the next tutorial. I hope this video was helpful for you and that you learned something. If not, just hang tight because there is a lot more to cover with this build. For now, though, I just wanted to say thank you for joining me. My name is Megahertz, and I'm out.